Um, you know, obviously, uh, I'm, I'm disappointed. Uh, I, I, I kind of knew what the outcome was going to be based on uh, the governor's tone and tenor uh, earlier in the week. Um, there has been no seriousness on the governor's part to actually solve these problems. Um, we got down to where I think he wanted to be. The only thing that we could do in a special session in his mind was the premium relief, which is literally the least possible thing the state could do, and it doesn't take effect until April 1st. Uh, we put forward a plan uh, that offered continuity of care and, and would have helped people January 1st. And you heard the governor reject that. Uh, unfortunately, um, there is just no effort on the part of the governor or the administration to actually push anyone to solve any of these problems. And, and uh, you know, now isn't the time to say I told you so, but uh, this, this disaster could have been averted had the governor alerted us earlier in the process. Uh, they've known about this problem since May 1st. They didn't tell us about it until basically October 1st. Um, and by then it was too late to actually solve the problem. Now, all of the solutions we bring for the last two months uh, have, have been just handily rejected time and time again. Uh, I, I, and, and we just want to make sure that people who need coverage, uh, who, are, who are getting coverage right now, and in some cases, uh, you know, might be a life-saving cancer treatment at Mayo Clinic. We want to make sure that people are able to continue those treatments on January 1st. And, and with the governor's plan, they will not be able to. The governor negotiated a plan that are, is going to throw people off of the, the treatments they have now, uh, away from their, their current doctor. They're going to be driving, you know, 60 and 80 miles in some cases in greater Minnesota uh, to get to, the, to a doctor who will accept the, the coverage they have. Um, it's incredibly disappointing. And I think we had an opportunity not only to do uh, some, some real things to help people on January 1st, uh, but we had an opportunity to do some tax relief and a, and a bonding bill that could have helped uh, Minnesotans all over the state. And, and unfortunately, the governor uh, decided this week to kind of go against our agreement on Tuesday and uh, start throwing out things that haven't been discussed in months or, or even in some cases at all, uh, incredibly disappointing. Mr. Speaker, are your private meetings with the governor this bitter and acrimonious, or is this a case of people playing to the cameras a little bit? I, I think it was the governor playing to the cameras. Um, it, it, you know, just unfortunately, uh, he, he just hasn't been serious about wanting to fix this problem. Uh, when, when I say that the solution they've put in place is the least possible thing they can do, every time we ask uh, to, to put something in place to help Minnesotans on January 1st, they tell us we can't implement that. Well, what they've put forward is the only thing they say they can implement, and the state literally has to do nothing. Now, believe me, uh, when, when the governor says I, they can't implement anything, based on their track record the last four years, I tend to, to agree that they probably can't. I think he's being truthful. Uh, but you know what? I think Minnesotans deserve us to try. Uh, I think we need to push the insurance companies, and, and I'm going to keep pushing the administration uh, to try to get help for people on January 1st. I, I, don't, I don't know what to tell somebody. That's why I asked the governor to look at the cameras and tell them that, that they're not going to have, uh, you know, to be able to continue their cancer treatments on January 1st. And, and he needs to look at them and tell them that there's nothing he can do to help them. I, I didn't create this problem. And I'm willing to try. And we put forward a bill that we believe will help those people. And unfortunately, the governor's rejecting that. This may be a stupid question, but does this mean there's definitely no special session? I, I think uh, I had come to that conclusion before now, but, um, you know, unfortunately, and it did take me a little while to respond to the governor's uh, letter on Tuesday. Um, sending letters back and forth is never a an indication that someone is serious about getting something done. Letters back and forth, you will always have a letter, you and the press will always have a letter before I have it. Um, that's what they're intended for. They're not intended to accomplish anything. They're intended to draw lines in the sand and make it look like you're doing something you're not. Um, the governor's letter on Tuesday was so shocking to me. It was so outside of what we had talked about two weeks ago um, that it took me so off guard I didn't even know how to respond. Um, and I was pretty angry by it because uh, it, it just, when somebody's word isn't good around here, um, it, it's, it's pretty tough to, to trust them and, and, and accomplish things that are going to be good for Minnesotans. Mr. Speaker, I hope to ask the governor what he meant by he wants to take responsibility, his responsibility for this. But I have you here now. What's yeah. your responsibility for this failure? I will say our responsibility has probably been that we've been too tough on them. Um, and and it, it comes from a, a, an honest place because we really do care about Minnesotans and we want to, we want to make sure they get the coverage and the help they need. But this problem is so bad 
and, and, and probably our role in it has been we've been too tough on the Democrats and, and they have kind of retracted and recoiled. And, and you know, when the governor says they can't implement anything, um, their track record isn't good. Uh, I believe they probably can't. <laughs> But you know what? We got to try. The governor brought up the Virgin Island trips trip multiple times this week. Uh, was that an impediment in any way? And should you have been there this week? You know, it was a legislative conference. Uh, we go to those regularly. The governor goes to National Governors Association, uh, Democratic Governors Association. He goes to those regularly. That's part of our job, and it, it allows us to interact with other legislators and with other governors. Um, those are important, but. Uh, this was more important. That's why I got on a plane and flew back here. Um, it, it's more important. It, it, and I, I will tell you that it was okay for me to be gone. And Senator Bach is gone and he's there right now because we had authorized people who were here who, who know these issue areas to negotiate on our behalf. We set guardrails two weeks ago. We told them, this is what we want you to accomplish, but stay within these guardrails. The governor basically jumped the guardrail on Tuesday with his letter. Um, you know, he's, he's blowing the, the bonding bill by $400 million or $300 million and, and putting projects in that, that we, ha we haven't talked about in, in months. Um, that to me, on Tuesday when I got his letter, and it took me a little while to, for it to absorb, but that's when I realized there wasn't going to be a special session because the governor didn't want one. Um, he was going to do basically everything he could to, to scuttle that, um, and, and he did. And, and my understanding is that the, the union groups uh, did not want a special session. They did not want the tax relief, and they were putting an immense amount of pressure on the governor not to have a special session. So um, ultimately, I think that's what happened, uh, but I guess that's a question for him. Are you guys aware that you almost word for word have exactly the same reason for this, that both of you say that, you, that, you add, that each side added more provisions and that made a deal impossible? I mean, what are people to make of that? Well, I... <laughs> We have been talking about these provisions. I sat in meetings myself talking about the provisions that, that we want to help Minnesotans on, on January 1st uh, for months. Um, they are no surprise. Um, but all along, the governor has said no to those every time. No, we can't help people on January 1st. And I think that's just incredibly uninspiring. Um, I, I, I expect more from the governor and the administration, and, and I'm going to hold them to a higher standard. And, and, and I'm going to keep the pressure on them uh, to do what's right. And when, when session starts on January 3rd, uh, the House of Representatives will pass a bill out the first week of session uh, that will help Minnesotans. Um, you have my word on that. Speaker, how much of this uh, breakdown represents a divide in policy? And how much represents just the inability of, to work personality-wise between you and the governor? Well, I, I, think, I think you have to want a special session to get to one. And I thought on, on December 2nd, I remember standing in this room on December 2nd saying, you know, we're not there yet, but I can see the deal. And I've been in the room when, when the agreement comes together, and, and that's what it feels like. Uh, the problem is when people left that room, they didn't live up to that, that agreement. And, and uh, you know, I think the governor uh, wanted to take some cheap political shots at me. And, you know, fair game, go ahead. But, but unfortunately, that didn't provide a single Minnesotan with insurance coverage, um, and it didn't, it didn't provide any assurance to any Minnesotan uh, that's going to be losing their cancer treatment at the Mayo on January 1st. Um, these are real problems. And, and, you know, drafting letters and sending them off to a, a legislative conference isn't going to help. Um, so, you know, I... Sounds like it's more about the personal side. It is. It is. I, I, I just, I believe the governor did not want a special session. Uh, I believe that he was under an immense amount of pressure not to do the tax relief. I, I have seen uh, the governor say many times to the press, I support Sandpiper Pipeline, but yet his administration killed it. And they killed it by just slow rolling it to death. Um, and, and rather than do that, I wish the governor's administration would just be honest with people. You know, tell them you don't support mining on the Iron Range. Please tell them that. Don't, don't string them along. Don't let them believe that. Uh, I was glad that the governor yesterday did say that when, when he was asked that he called uh, Secretary Vilsack and, and recommended that they don't uh, extend the leases. Because now Minnesotans on the Iron Range know that Mark Dayton uh, and Tina Smith were against those jobs on the Iron Range. Um, and and I, I think that's you know, very telling. But unfortunately, the governor continues to say we support mining, but then his actions demonstrate differently. And I think that this situation is no different. 
he says he wants a special session, but then he does things to, to literally make it impossible to get to a special session. Well, Speaker, knowing what happened now and knowing likely not going to be a special session, what's going to happen in January seeing what we just saw in relationship to ha actually have real relief? Well, based on what the governor's plan is, which is to put 25% premium relief in place, uh, which, which is the very least I think the state can do and I think we should do it, um, his plan was not going to take effect. People were not going to see those dollars until April 1st, uh, at the very soonest. Um, so taking that into account, us passing something like that the first week of session is not going to make any difference. The governor's plan did not help a single Minnesotan on January 1st. It, it, and that's why I say his, the governor's plan is uninspiring. And it did not help a single Minnesotan on January 1st. So there wasn't, when we boiled it down and we got the, the bonding bill and the tax bill off the table, uh, and it was just the governor's plan, and he wouldn't accept any of our proposals that would actually help people on January 1st. When we got it down to just that, it's not even worth doing a special session. We, we can do more than that the first week of regular session, and it will have a greater impact for Minnesotans. And that's what we'll do. And we'll do it together. We'll do it together. You know what? The governor and I may be, get passionate because we care about what we do, uh, but I'm not somebody that holds grudges, and, and we're going to work together, and we're going to do it you know, we're going we're gonna to put a solution in place the first week of session that's going to help Minnesotans, and, and the governor's going to sign it. Um, so this is a little setback for Minnesotans right now, but, but unfortunately, I, I wish the, the governor would have had a little more vision and, and would have uh, looked a little further and, and, and worked a little harder to find something that actually would have had meaningful help on January 1st, and I think that's what his proposal lacked. What about a bonding bill? Is there going to be any appetite to pass one of those? On a I think it's bill? probably unlikely there will be a bonding bill for at least another year. Uh, it'll likely be the second year of the biennium, which is the tradition. So, 